When Jesus sent a message for the churches to John, by his angel in a vision, in the book of Revelation, he warned five out of the seven churches to repent of their sins. When the church of Ephesus was warned, Jesus also told them at Revelation 2:6 that in their favor, they at least hated the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Jesus said he also hates this doctrine. The reason he hates it, is because it is a false doctrine. Let us examine what the doctrine of the Nicolaitans is, and you will see, it's the same doctrine as once saved always saved, osis, that is being widely preached in the church today. And it is leading people on the broad path to hell. The Renner website has this to say about how vehement Jesus' feelings are towards this doctrine. Quote, Jesus was proud of the church of Ephesus for their hatred of the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which he also hated. The word hate is a strong word, so let's see exactly what it means. It comes from the Greek word misio, which means to hate, to abhor, or to find utterly repulsive. It describes a person who has a deep-seated animosity, who is antagonistic to something he finds to be completely objectionable. He not only loathes that object, but rejects it entirely. This is not just a case of dislike, it is a case of actual hatred. End quote. Jesus also warned the church of Pergamos about the Nicolaitan doctrine. Revelation 2, 14-16, quote, But I have a few things against you, because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. End quote. Clearly, Jesus is saying here, that the doctrine of the Nicolaitans is the same error as the doctrine of Balaam. If you go to 2 Peter 2, you will see Simon Peter speak in this chapter, of false teachers and their damnation, of wicked sinners and how God will keep the godly from temptation, but the unjust will be reserved to the day of judgment. The Cambridge Dictionary defines unjust, as, not morally right, not fair. Simon Peter goes on to say, that those in willful sin shall utterly perish in their own corruption. He then says it. 2 Peter 2, 13-15, quote, And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way, and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam the son of Bozer, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, end quote. Jude one eleven also talks of the error of Balaam, he demonstrated greed, when he set off ready to curse Israel for financial reward. Balaam was a diviner and prophet, King Balak knew that Balaam was someone who pronounced curses on people, which is why he enlisted his services. Balaam would have been killed by the Lord for his actions, had the Lord not given his donkey a voice to speak to him with, to stop him going further on his journey. And as you have already seen from Revelation 2, 14-16, Balaam also taught the Israelites to sin. Being a diviner and prophet, they will have trusted him, and he can only have done this by assuring them that despite their sin, they were still God's children. So clearly, the doctrine of Balaam, is a doctrine of compromise. The same as Osis is. The doctrine of Osis teaches that past, present and future sins are automatically forgiven, so no matter how much you sin you cannot lose salvation, you are eternally secure. Naturally this removes the fear of God and in many cases, encourages people to not strive against sin and walk in righteousness. Wikipedia states of the Nicolaitans. Quote, Several of the early church fathers mentioned this group, including Irenaeus, Hippolytus, Epiphanius, and Theodoret, stating that Deacon Nicholas, of Antioch, was the author of the heresy and the sect. Epiphanius relates some details of the life of Nicholas the deacon, and describes him as gradually sinking into the grossest impurity, and becoming the originator of the Nicolaitans and other libertine Gnostic sects. End quote. 
The Salt of the Earth blog has this to say. Quote, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans came forth from a wrong interpretation of the grace of God that was preached by the apostles. They misused the grace of God and the liberty in Christ to fulfill their carnal, sexual, lusts and desires. End quote. The point therefore is, not which specific sins that the Nicolaitans committed, but that they were believers that were in sin, thinking God would be okay with that. The same as sinful osis believers, are Christians who believe that they can continue in their worldly, sinful lives, and still be saved. 1 Corinthians 6, 9-10, and countless other scriptures, tell us that the unrighteous and disobedient are not saved. Jesus said looking with lust is the same as adultery, hating someone is the same as murder. Some sins are naturally worse than others, but the end result is the same in regards to salvation, because all sin is sin to God, and is against Him. We are so fortunate that Jesus died for all sins, so that we could repent of them, be set free from willful sin, and walk in righteousness unto salvation, see Romans 5:21. Jesus hates the doctrine of Osis, because it is a lie and is leading people to hell. So now you know that Osis is completely false doctrine which Jesus abhors, repent immediately of your deception and your sins, and get into right standing with the Lord, to be saved. God bless you.